fiery horse with speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high old silver, the Lone Ranger. of the Plains did more than anyone else to bring law and order to the western United States. He fought crime and criminals relentlessly, but he was always willing to give the man who wanted to go straight a second chance. His reputation for fair dealing was only equaled by his reputation for courage. Now let us return to those thrilling days when the West was young. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! We're heading for Millville! Someone's waiting for us there! Our own Silver! Oliver Bates and Hacksaw Hastings, two old Civil War veterans, wandered the western trails, hoping to make their fortunes. They were hungry and disheartened when they appeared at the Lazy End Ranch House, and the foreman, young Steve Manners, made them welcome. Jane Colfax, whose father owned the ranch, led Bolivar and Hacksaw to the cookhouse. Soon a huge plate of flapjacks was placed on the table. The veterans attacked, and now... With the enemy annihilated, we see them leaning back in their chairs. Steve says, Had enough, fellas? Friend, I'm plum fool to bust him. And I declare I ain't met up with such elegant cooking and such real manners since me and Hacksaw was riding the Virginia Valley with Dash and Jeb Stewart. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Bolivar. Miss, I ain't got Bolivar's language, but him and me sure got the same sentiments. I'm glad you like the food. And you're welcome to stay on until you find something to do. That's what I was just telling them. Gosh, this is like dying and going to heaven. I'll have to see about the dishes now. And I'd better be getting saddled. I'll be in at noon, though, Jane. All right, Steve. There goes one of the sweetest little ladies I ever seen. She ain't to be beat. I, I'm hoping that one of these days we'll be getting hitched. Me and Bob, us, you wish you luck. You treated us real white. I'll take my dishes out to the kitchen. I'd like another word with Jane. I reckon you would. See, who that just stopped outside? Huh? You can see him through the window. Well, I don't know. He's a... Steve, you look like you've seen a ghost. What made you drop your dishes? I was just clumsy, I reckon. It didn't look that way to me. It looked like the sight of that fellow was... You'll have to excuse me, friends. I... There's something I have to see through. Hey, wait! You fellas just make yourselves to home. I, I'm right busy now. Well, I'll be done. Hacksaw, if I ever seen a fellow scared afore, Steve was sure him. I can't figure it out. It seemed like just as soon as I pointed to that fellow that rode up, Steve went all to pieces. To pieces? He flew out of here like he was shot from a scattergun. What do you suppose got into him, Bolivar? I don't know, but I aim to find out. But I don't Look. See... 
Steve and that fella act as though maybe they've met up before. Mean-looking gent, ain't he? And now they're coming into the ranch house. Gosh, I wonder if Steve's in some kind of trouble. Come on, Hacksaw. Huh? Get up out of that chair, doggone you. If Steve's in trouble after treating us so white, it's up to us to do something about it, ain't it? But what can we do? I don't know. But first we've got to find out what the trouble is. Come on. But if Steve wanted us along in Damascus... We don't need no invitation. There's an open window over there, ain't they? Close the door behind you. Uh, you mean we should just listen in without saying nothing? Look here, Hacksaw. If you see a fella drowning, you don't wait for him to send you a note asking you to save him, do you? Well, from the look on Steve's face, I'd say he was in a worse fix than drowning. And I'm going to do something about it. Well, I Keep don't... your voice down. There's the window just ahead. You don't act real glad to see me, Steve. Why in blazes did you have to come here, Morgan? I reckon a fella can start in the cattle business where he's a mind to, can he? You in the cattle business. <laughs> Rustling cattle's more your style. <laughs> so you ain't forgot the old days, eh, Steve? I'll forget them if you let me. Remember the time we stole most a thousand head from the bar box outfit up Montana Way? Blast you. I've gone straight since then. Why can't you let me alone? <laughs> Besides, I was just a wild kid then. I turned out law because I thought it was something smart. But I soon learned different. Got a right nice job here, ain't you? What's that to you? And I hear you've been keeping company with the boss's girl. You figuring on getting married? Get to the point. You ain't here just to tell what you've heard. Well, like I say, I'm going to be a real rancher. I just bought the old Kramer place on the other side of town. The Kramer place? There ain't no stock on that range. There ain't for a fact. And where'd you get the cash to stock it? You been holding up stages? <laughs> That's where you come in, Steve. Huh? You're going to see to it that I get enough cattle to set me up. I ain't got no cash, no cattle either. But your boss has. You mean you I want mean me? I mean you're going to see that I get a thousand head of old man Colfax's cow. Now, you hold on. I ain't through talking yet. I just see you in blazes first. And even if I was willing, you wouldn't get away with it. You're forgetting the cows that belong to this ranch are all wearing the Lazy End brand. <laughs> I ain't forgetting nothing. I got a brand already registered. Yeah? The Box Z. But you can't All get... I have to do when you deliver them cows is to have my boys work them over with a running iron. It won't be no trick at all to change a Lazy End into a Box Z. You rotten polecat. Get out of here. You'll do as I say or your fine friends are going to hear all about your being an outlaw. I ain't wanted by the law. There's nobody here would believe anything again me. <laughs> no? But maybe they'd believe this letter if they was to see it. You and you didn't get ready to grab it. This is just a copy. I got the real one where you ain't liable to get your hands on it. That, that's a letter I read when I was in Montana. And it says enough to prove anything I want it to. I'd like to break your neck. I reckon you would. But you ain't gonna. You're gonna see that I get them cows. I... I won't. Suit yourself. If you don't want to lose your job and your girl both, you'll do like I say. But... But if Sam Colfax come back and found a thousand head missing, I'd lose my job anyhow. <laughs> Is it your fault if rustlers stole them? A, a thousand head. It's that or the letter. I, I've got to have time to think it over. I don't know just what to do. I'll give you a week. But in a a week. <laughs> and in the meantime, I think I'll use the time to get acquainted with that girl you've been sparking. I hear she's right pretty. You dirty skunk. <laughs> Did you hear what that fellow is trying to make Steve do? And him a friend of ours. I wish there was some way we could help him. You come along with me. But what are you going to do? Come on, you and me are making a trip. A, a trip? We're going to find the masked man. But what for? Old Silver, General Sherman. Hacksaw, <laughs> maybe we can't help Steve any, but the masked fellow and Tonto sure can. I golly, I never thought of that. And I got a darn good notion where they are. We'll tell them the whole thing. That's a good idea, Bob. And Hacksaw, what that mask fellow will do to that slick outlaw will be a plenty. Come on, get gentlemen, gentlemen. Get, get up there. Get up there. Get up there.
The two old soldiers rode as swiftly as their ancient horses would carry them. Bolivar, unfortunately, had no more than a vague idea where the Lone Ranger might be found. And for several days, they found no trace of him. Told to wait in this town, Hexall. Well, we were just have to go on looking. And the time's getting less all the while. Oh, Steve. But we'll find them fellas yet. Get up, General. Get up. Get, up. Get, up. Get on. Get up. Have you seen anything of a redskin by the name of Tonto around here? Ain't seen no engines at all. Two days left. Hurry, Bolivar. We still got more traveling to do. What town's this, Bolivar? Mildale. I'm just about ready to give up. So am I, Hexaw. But I recollect Tonto saying something about there being outlaws down this way. Well, if we... Hey! Look at that horse in front of the cafe. That's the paint horse Tonto got from old Thundercloud. And ain't that Tonto back in the shadows? Howling Tomcats. Hey, Tonto! Tonto! Oh, 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 there. Oh, 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 oh. I ain't been so glad to see anybody since the time old Jeb Stewart pinned all them medals on my chest. <laughs> Tonto, feel plenty good see you. Tonto, you are a sight for so eyes. What, what you do here? We've been looking for you. Uh, where's your mask pod? Him in camp. We gotta see him right away. Tonto, take you there. There ain't no time to waste, Tonto. We gotta move awful fast. Here, paint horse. Guys, I just about give up all hope. What? What matter? Everything's the matter, Tonto. Come on, we'll tell you about it while we're riding. Get him up, get paint him horse. Get him, Sherman. Get him. Come on, boy. As the days passed, Morgan Hanley spent more and more of his time at the Lazy Inn. We see him now in the afternoon before the final day set for Steve's decision, speaking with Jane Colfax. They are on the porch of the ranch house. Miss Jane, I can't see no reason why you and me can't be good friends. I I prefer to choose my friends myself. Meaning you ain't got no time for me? You can take it any way you want to. It's Steve, eh? I don't see why I have to explain myself. If you'll excuse me, I'm going inside. Just a second. Yes? I got some things to say. And the first is, you and Steve ain't gonna get hitched up. Let me by. Stay in where you are. I could tell you plenty about Steve. If you don't act more friendly, I'll get him in so much trouble, he'll never get out. Let me by, Steve. You stubborn little fool. Steve! Steve! Keep your mouth shut. Oh, you, you... What's the trouble, Jane? You stay out of this, Steve. Make this fellow leave me be. Morgan, I told you what would happen if you didn't quit pestering Jane here. You'd better mind your talk. Stand away from her. I won't, I tell this you. This old teacher... Oh. You, you hit me. I should tear you apart. I'll get that letter You out. show that letter and your chances of getting what you want it done for. Oh, last year. I got till tomorrow. Now get out of here. I'll go. And I'll wait till tomorrow. But if you don't give me your answer then... Yeah? Then I'll see to it you run right out of this county. Go on, get! And if you think I don't mean it, just try and stall for more time. Steve, uh, what is it? What holds that man got on? Uh, I can't tell you, honey. Don't you think I can be... Trusted? Jane, don't ask me about it, please. I won't, Steve, but... But I just want you to know this. Whatever it is, whatever you've done, I... I'll still love you. <coughs> Jane! Hey, wait! The curtain falls on the first act of our thrilling Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Now 
to continue our story. When Bolivar Bates and Hacksaw Hastings stopped at the Lazy N Ranch, they discovered that its young foreman, Steve Manners, had written an incriminating letter several years before. The letter was held by an outlaw, Morgan Hanley, who threatened Steve with exposure unless he stole a thousand head of his employer's cattle. Bolivar and Hacksaw set out to find the Lone Ranger. Hanley gave Steve one week to decide whether or not to obey his orders. On the sixth day, the two men quarreled. And that evening, Morgan went to the cafe in town. Now, as our second act opens, we see Bolivar and Hacksaw as they approach the door of the cafe. Get Morgan's inside, Bolivar. I'll push back the door and see. There he is. He's standing right at the end of the bar. You go on and talk to him. Come on in. Guys, every time I see that bird, he looks meaner than the last time. There ain't nothing to be afraid of. If he gets tough, we'll just give him that steely look of ours. Yeah. Howdy, friend. Your name, Morgan? Huh? How'd you fellas know my name? Shucks, we know a heap more than that about you. Don't we, Hexel? That we do. Yeah? Now, but maybe we had an ought to talk where anybody can hear us. Say, what are you two old goats getting at? What's that you called us? Careful there, mister. Get the places away from here. I ain't got the time or the mind to do any talking with a couple of tramps like you fellas. Why can't son your hide eye? Well, come along, Hacksaw. I reckon he ain't interested in now knowing about that letter of Steve's he's got. What's that? Yeah, Bolivar. I figured maybe he was the kind of fellow we could do business with. Just hold don't... on. What's that you said about a letter? You uh, willing to talk? We can't do no talking here. We'll go over to that table there in the corner. Sounds like he's changed his tune, Bolivar. <laughs> yeah. Come on. I don't know what your game is, but by golly, I'm going to find out. Me and my partner just had a notion you could use some help. And get the cattle you want without half so much trouble. Sit down. Sure, sure. Now, talk and talk fast. How come you know about that letter? Steve told us. Why? You better tell him the rest of it, Bolivar, before he gets the wrong ID. I reckon I had. He looks mad enough to bust. The rest of what? Well, it's like this. Steve told us, on account of we had a letter mighty like yours. And we had the same notion you had. Only we went there looking for cash, as we wouldn't know what to do with cows if he'd given to us. How'd you get hold of any such letter? You see that Indian sitting at that table all alone? Yeah? He's got a friend, a masked fella. An outlaw, huh? <laughs> well, some fellas call him that. Go on, keep talking. He knew Steve when he was an outlaw, just like you did. And he had a letter to prove it. Well, I'll be... So when we done him a favor once, he give us the letter. And you fellas are trying to get cash from Steve for it? That was the notion we had. We went to him, and when we told him about it, he was fit to be tied. So then we got the idea you and us could work together. How do you figure that? Steve uh, put up quite a fuss when you asked him for that thousand head, didn't he? And what if he did? Oh, he was thinking maybe you went about it the wrong way. What you want to do is to ask for just a little at first to get him used to the idea how easy it is to steal. Yeah? And then when he's give you maybe 50 head or so of cattle, come on back with that letter we got and ask for the thousand. Say, maybe you fellas ain't as dumb as you look. <laughs> Shucks, we just looked that way a purpose. If folks savvied how downright slick we was, uh, they'd be afeard of us. That they would, mister. But how do I know you're telling the truth? Steve wouldn't have told us about the letter you got. Lesson we knew something too, would he? Maybe not. And besides, we'll show you the letter. The engine can tell you where we got it. And what do you fellas want out of this? We ain't asking for much. We can't get cash from Steve, so you can take cattle and pay us when you've sold it. Yeah. Hey, where are you going? I'm going to check that engine story with yours. Then I'm going to have a look at that letter. And if you've been talking straight, maybe we can do business. Morgan talked to Tonto and then agreed to the plan outlined by Bolivar and Hacksaw. The next morning, he rode to the Lazy Inn, dismounted, and rapped on the ranch house door. <laughs> that was a 
slick scheme, all right, that them two old coots thought up. But if they think they're going to get their share after we're done, they got a mighty big surprise coming. Yeah, what in blazes is keeping Steve? So there you are. I've been looking for you. Come on in. You made up your mind yet? Yep. Well? I ain't giving you nothing. You... You ain't? I'll tell you why. I can't let no thousand head go. If I did, the boss would show us devil savvy something was wrong. But you've got and to... decide. There was two other fellas here with a letter I wrote. If I pay you off, well, I got to pay them too. Why, I ain't asking for no thousand head. Huh? <laughs> no, I changed my mind. Give me 50 and the letter's yours. Well, that's some different. What's more, I'll give you my word them two fellas won't ask you for nothing. You mean that? I know them two old coots, and I ain't letting them interfere with my game. And you'll give me the letter you got just for 50 head? That's what I said, ain't it? 50 head wouldn't be hard to cover up. Of course really. it wouldn't. And that's a heap better than having me show folks that letter. But I don't know. I ain't giving you no more time. Are you sure those fellas won't trouble me? You just leave them to me. And, and I'll do it. <laughs> I thought you'd have some sense. I'll send some of my boys around just as soon as it gets dark to collect them cows. I'll be waiting for them. Good. I'll be seeing you later. Yeah. <laughs> Hexaw and Bolivar won't come around with that second letter. But I ain't said that I wouldn't. <laughs> just wait till Steve sees it's me that's got it instead of them. Get up there. Come on, get up there. Get up there. Get up there. That evening, Morgan, Hacksaw, and Bolivar sat astride their horses, watching the approach of a small herd of cattle. The men hazing the cattle along turned them toward the corrals of the old Kramer place that Morgan had purchased. The outlaw looked at his two companions and chuckled. <laughs> well, there they are. Fifty head of cattle for nothing. Told you it worked, didn't we? You give Steve that out of your hand? Yeah, but I give him my word you fellas wouldn't trouble him none. <laughs> but I never promised I wouldn't. Morgan's near as smooth a customer as us, ain't he, Hacksaw? Well, but it took us to show him what to do. But shucks, you can't expect everybody to have our brains. You gonna talk to Steve tonight, Morgan? Uh-huh. I don't want to give him the chance to do any thinking. Them was Jeb Stewart's tactics. Keep the enemy on the run without letting them get collected. What's tactics, Bolivar? Why, it's, uh, uh it's the, uh, the... Oh, don't show your ignorance, Hacksaw. Now that Steve's seen how easy it is to give me the cows he did, he ain't going to put up so near so much fuss when I ask for more. You better be getting home. <laughs> I'm going right now. Hey, fellas, yeah, start branding them cows. Take your running irons and fix them up to look like box Z stuff. We'll get right at it, boys. Get up there. Come on. Get up there. Get up there. Well, there he goes to see Steve. <laughs> yep. We'll give him a head start. And then I reckon we'll tag along after to see the fireworks. <laughs> Morgan, with the second letter in his pocket, rode swiftly to the Lazy M. There he found Steve standing in front of the house. What you come back for, Morgan? <laughs> we still got more business, Steve. Look here. What are you up to now? I just wanted to show you this other letter. So what are you trying? And for this one, I'm asking a thousand head of cattle like before. You I don't know. stop using your language too free. It'll be just the worst for you. But you said this other letter would never be used. <laughs> you must have misheard me, Steve. I'm downright sorry if you got me wrong. But all I said was that Bolivar and Hacksaw wouldn't come around with it. I should have known better than to believe anything you say. But all you gotta do is give me the cows I want, and then our business is done for good. We better step over closer to the corner of the house. I wouldn't want to be seen talking to you. Yeah. This will do all right. Now, what about it? You gonna give me that thousand head, or do I have to show folks this letter? I, I guess you <laughs> recollect what it says, all right. I oughta. I wrote it, didn't I? I knew that as soon as I seen it. You mean I ain't got no choice at all? You won't settle it some other way? I told you my terms. Well, this is blackmail. Sure it is. 
And what are you going to do about it? I don't know. But I ain't going to let you Who's get away. Who's that coming? One of them is riding a paint horse. Oh, 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 what in places are you doing here? You'll find out soon enough, mister. Tonto won't find lawman. You're looking for the sheriff? Uh, the sheriff? Tell you what's up. Why would the redskin come here for the sheriff? Because I was just standing around the corner of the house to hear what you had to say. And we heard everything. Two did meters you hear something? enough, sheriff? I sure did. You're going to jail, Morgan. Steve, you blasted fool. Yeah? I'll show him the letter. Sheriff Steve's a crook, and I can prove it by this letter here. That letter don't interest me none. But, but Steve wrote it. You ain't denying it, are you, Steve? <laughs> no. <laughs> Morgan, I know what's in that letter already. <laughs> I ought to. I was with him yesterday when the mask fella told Steve what to write. The mask man? Yep, it was his idea. He had Steve write the letter, then rub it in some dirt so it wouldn't look too recent. And you fell for it, Morgan. I was tricked. You tricked plenty. But Steve's a crook. I had a letter he wrote back in Montana. I don't know anything about that. I ain't seen it. He... He must have torn it up. Then there ain't nothing I can do about it. Uh, Tonto, uh, tell him what happened back to his place. <laughs> Deputy, get other fella. They rounded up the whole bunch? <laughs> mm, that's right. We see him change brand. And that's another charge against you, Morgan. I was tipped off that maybe you had your fellas changing the brand on some lazy end cows, and then they caught you at it. I, I got them from Steve. Is that right, Steve? He's got to prove it. But, but you gave them to me. Looks like you can't, Morgan. Well, you're coming along with me. Steve, I told you to listen to what that masked fella said, didn't I? If it wasn't for him and you fellas, I don't know what I'd have done. Well, you treated us white, so we done the best we could for you. And, Jane, you ain't holding none of this again, me, are you? Of course not, Steve. I understand more about this than you think. Thank heaven for that. Watch out for Morgan! You ain't gonna get me! Get him off! He's running for his heart! You look. Mask friend, catch him. Got him now. By <laughs> golly, our mad friend was just waiting for him to make a break. Stay where you are, Morgan. This time I got you covered. It looks as though if it weren't for the mask man, he'd have got away anyhow. We owe him a lot, Steve. you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. (laughs) ¶¶ 